Good morning, folks. We've got weather, the Wallace line, interstellar arcs, molecular clouds, and cosmology today. As plasma filaments dance over the limbs, we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on the sun was mostly dominated by the southern coronal hole system. Few bright points on the north persist, but are inactive. We are seeing the polar confined coronal hole structure, which marks the readiness for the magnetic terminator of the solar cycle switch that ramps up into the next one. And until then, it is all about those coronal holes and the solar wind. We've had minor variability there for a number of days, fluctuating between normal and slightly intensified solar wind, so we've been fluctuating between quiet and slightly intensified geomagnetic conditions. All in the green, though. The precipitation in California off the system of lows dancing along the coastline has been record-breaking. The mudslides, too. Not the usual time of year for them to get this. And after an extra dry and hot start to the winter for Alaska, things have shifted considerably. Record snow marks in Alaska, likely not a trivial thing. Eyes open tonight as the system dropping snow in the northeast will draw its convergence tail through the east-central states. It will be out of the way and moving on in 24 to 36 hours, but it's got to get to the ocean first. Coming back to those locusts we've been reporting the last few months, we've seen record swarms in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia this year, and as many have surmised over the last few months of that reporting, it's beginning to affect regional food futures. The genuine concern that the locusts are going to eat the region into starvation is a real thing, with 20 to 400x increases in the swarm numbers. Interesting little bit up next on the Wallace line, this is where they notice a definitive and sharp cutoff between the Asian animals like tigers and the Australian ones like the marsupials. For over a hundred years, this was thought to be an absolute fact of a line, but leave it to Christmas Island to throw a wrench in the mix. As Australian DNA dominates numerous specimens taken there, they are having to realize that they must redraw the Wallace line to bow out in the Indian Ocean and include the new discovery. This was one of the most definitive biosphere lines in existence until now. Okay, let's get our heads up into the clouds and actually much, much higher than that. Interesting piece up next on water and air requirements for an interstellar arc. Always fun when the scientists dive into their fantasy worlds and even better when they post the paper for free so we can take the ride with them. It's linked for you below. Folks, every once in a while, serendipity shines on you and you do something like catch the eclipse of a binary star system containing an ancient sun-like star. Apparently, the line-of-sight interaction delivered years' worth of analysis to be done with the data. They do hope to learn what will happen to the sun when it's that old. And speaking of things that are old, they are taking a look at some very, very old tree rings here and using them to call into question one of the great solar events in the past. Now, this one happened at about 3300 BC, but they are also noticing that the 11-year sunspot cycle is clearly evident in every single specimen that they looked at. It seems every time we get one of these analyses, they go back and have something new to guess about what happened in antiquity, but they come back and confirm something we know about the short-term solar climate forcing as well. Japanese radio telescope focusing on nearby molecular clouds up next. These ones are ripe with star formation, and the one of absolute focus is absolutely a helix. They never say that word in the paper, but if you follow the link and look at the figures, you're going to recognize filaments spiraling around one another. And while they didn't mention that, they did mention that the Omega Nebula, M17, looks to have taken a star formation ignition when it got hit by the galactic current sheet, or as they call it, a spiral galactic wave passage. Parker spiral, current sheet. That's heavy for veterans, I know, but we'll end lightly today with some cosmologists trying so hard to creatively work around the cataclysmic failure known as the search for dark matter and the expansion rates in observation. Well, it turns out that all you have to do is presume that somehow the Earth is inside a 250 million light year wide bubble, along with the rest of our galaxy and neighboring galaxies, and that this bubble is half the density of the rest of the universe. Oh, what luck to find such a spot. I imagine if you modeled our cosmos as a neuron inside Mickey Mouse's head, you'd come up with some different answers too. Yes, they are just making stuff up now as hypotheticals and posting papers about what it could be. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.